Welcome to Notes from the North with Kyle and Sam. Welcome back to Notes from the North. Kyle and Sam are here. Uh, Super Bowl happened yesterday. Uh, we're recording a little bit later today. Um, I, You know what? I'm curious what you thought of the game as a whole. Like Again, I think sometimes you come away from Super Bowls, you're like, man, that was a really good game. Sometimes you come away and it's a dud. Uh, yeah. Last night, I think, felt like it had moments of it going both of those ways at different points. Um, but yeah. just now, as you sit here Monday, what were your thoughts about uh, that game yesterday? Like, I actually enjoyed the game. Like, the main criteria for me is of a fun Super Bowl is just that it's close, right? Like, I know there's probably a lot of people felt that uh, it wasn't really like a like a high flying offense. Things were super open, so there to Sam predicted this would happen that it'd be a bit of a defensive battle, right? So uh, tip of the cap to Sam here for getting that one right. But uh, it was a bit of a defensive battle for a good portion. It opened up a bit in the second half, obviously. Um, but it was a tight game, right? And and it's like there was a lot of really good moments on specials, on defense, a lot of really fun stuff there. And then obviously there's you know mistakes. You think of the major one from San Francisco where it goes off uh, the blocker's ankle kind of creates that, um, I don't know, kind of frenzied scenario. And then of course, Kansas city scores and you kind of think and the margin is that small when you're facing Kansas city, the margin is that small, man. And you make that small mistake. And of course they capitalize. And then you miss your PAT. And of course they capitalize because that would have been, it would have been a four point lead right at the end and then instead of a three-point lead they kicked the field goal tied the game sent it to overtime so you just there's these moments and then in overtime um you're down near the goal line you run the ball you run the ball and then there's a brock birdie incompletion and you, and you kind of settle for a field goal which in that moment you have to get take the points you have to get the field goal but um what's the, what's the line about if you're if you're coming for the king you best not miss right or however the line goes if, if you're really trying to take down the king you can't miss, right? Because if you do miss, you're in a world of trouble. And and that's basically how it went. I mean, they had their chances and they just they didn't take down the king. And then the king went down and scored and won the game. And so I, I actually thought it was a relatively exciting game. I mean, yeah. you walk off in overtime in the Super Bowl. That's pretty exciting, right? I, I mean, I think a lot of people are disappointed as the Chiefs just because they have kind of become like the Patriots now in a sense, but um, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, no, like, again, it felt, I think it felt a little bit slow at the start. And through, like you yeah. said, it was, it was a bit of a defensive battle. It did feel like until that turnover on special teams that yep. um, huge Kansas huge. City just wasn't going. And then it was like, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. We're, yep. we, we woke up a little bit. It's, it's time to go. Um, yep. Yeah. I, like, it, it was a fun game. Like you said, it goes to overtime. It was close. You had moments. Uh, mm -hmm. certainly I know I had predicted, uh, Kansas city. Thanks for mentioning that. I, I wasn't going to, um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, you predicted Kansas city and not just Kansas city, but that it'd be a bit of a defensive grudge match. And, so even like, kind of like the feel of the game, you kind of were on that one as well. Yeah. And Taylor Swift and the you got the Taylor players. Swift component wrong. Um, man, you, uh, you get that wrong. I think, sorry, you got the Taylor Swift part wrong. Didn't you? How? Didn't you say four times on the screen no, for her? No, no. You said four. I said six. Go back. Go back and re-listen. Interesting. Well, this is some go, go, go back. Go back and re-listen. Interesting. Because really? because my whole thing was Taylor Swift six times, and that's going to mirror San Francisco six point win. Interesting. Well, so go ahead. Go I ahead. I remember it differently. Too bad. Too bad we have recordings. So that <laughs> yeah, that's right. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. There's actual. You could actually settle this debate. There is. There is evidence. Um, okay. Well, yep. I um I was feeling really good. Now I'm just feeling uh, somewhat good. But uh, regardless, was a good game. Uh, mm -hmm. Was was fun. Again, certainly some interesting piece to talk about. We might talk about a little bit more uh, at other points. I'm curious for this though, mm -hmm. halftime show, one out of ten. Yeah. What do you give it? Six. It's fine. Yeah, uh, I don't. I mean, I know some of Usher's music. I don't care about Usher's music. It's fine. I don't know. I don't know where you. Uh, yeah. Alicia Keys. She's an amazing singer. She's probably the best part. 
Yeah. Um, like she's got a beautiful voice, obviously. Uh, I don't know. What do you think? Did you enjoy did you enjoy a halftime show? Uh, you know, I was watching. I was like, this isn't for me. Um, yeah, yeah. But it was good enough. Again, I would, I would, I was gonna say six as well. Um, I did find the chore- yeah. uh, choreography with the roller skating. I was, uh, I was pretty impressed with that. That was yeah. Uh, the roller skating was that was a curveball for me. I didn't anticipate the roller skating. It was uh, I enjoyed I enjoyed that part. Um, right. And so, uh, yeah, certainly was was a good game. And, and I think at the end of the day, you see two really good teams. Uh, mm-hmm. and I think mm-hmm. one of the things that we specialize in is uh, how do we make everything about the Vikings? Um, because that's kind of what we're doing. And so I, I guess uh, this is a team where we're focused on. Mm-hmm. As you think about the Vikings uh, and you think about those two teams last night, I, yeah. I guess maybe one of the questions I have is that what team is it easier for the Vikings to kind of replicate? Because it, I think as you look at both those teams, it certainly feels like, okay, you're several pieces away from yep. this, but you you you'd see as yep. you're watching last night, okay, like these are two ways that you can win. Uh, yep. Again, again, you look at San Francisco, and we've talked about it. Just edge rushers coming out of the wazoo. Uh, yeah, yep, they yep. put a lot of pressure on. Uh, they had yeah. a lot of stars around. Bosa, the... Bosa was excellent. Yeah. He was just in Mahomes' lap the whole night. Bosa was tremendous. And I mean, like they had plays from other guys in the D line, but the edge rushers showed up. Yeah, uh, and and you know, at Kansas City, you've obviously Patrick Mahomes, but uh, and, and you got. Your Travis Kelsey's, uh, and you've got some some real studs on the defensive end. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, I guess I, I'm curious. Like again, I don't think that you try and replicate exactly what teams are doing, but mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I guess a little bit of where, where do the Vikings go from here? Considering you know that's mm-hmm. what you need to to win. Yeah, I, so you're always trying to just cultivate your own unique identity. Right. I actually wrote about this recently for Purple PTSD. Um, you know, what is the Vikings identity? What makes them unique? What do they have on their team that helps them to stand apart and gain an edge? Not just stand apart and be different, but actually become better than other teams. Um it's in terms of the Super Bowl and who they could kind of like most easily replicate and kind of tweak it for their own purposes would probably be the Niners. You know, that's where Quasi got his start, right? Was in San Francisco. And you think like just that abundant skill in offense, right? And then like loading up on pass rushers on defense, right? And then kind of building. And I know that the Vikings don't really, they haven't really loaded up on pass rushers on defense. But you can also see that the front seven right now, you know, the GM has kind of walked the front seven right into this kind of transition moment in this offseason. And it's very possible that uh, things start getting loaded up, right? Maybe that means bringing back Daniel Hunter. Maybe that means bringing in one of the kind of top guys in the free agent market. Maybe that means finally sinking a first or second round selection into a defensive end or in a 3-4 and outside linebacker. You could kind of see how the Vikings could replicate that model a little bit. And then the great wild cards like quarterback, right? Like, do you, not that you're going to get, you know, Brock Purdy final pick of the draft. He's going to become your guy, but do you get the young guy in a rookie contract? And kind of make it work. The concern a little bit is just that that's what Philly did two years ago. Rookie quarterback contract, a loaded roster, including abundant skill on offense and tremendous pass rushers. San Francisco, rookie contract quarterback, deep, deep abundant pass rushers, crazy skill on offense. And in each instance, it wasn't good enough to take down Kansas City, right? So that's not to say that, therefore, this is a horrible model. It can never win. Don't do it. Because Patrick Mahomes is just going to beat you anyhow. But it gives you a bit of pause. It gives you a bit of pause. Because the philosophy, you know, in a, in a broad sense at least, is is quite similar. And hasn't been good enough. So this is... And what what was it that Patrick Mahomes said? Is, you know, he's, he's talking to... Oh, I can't recall the reporter's name. But he's talking to a reporter immediately after the game. And... He's immediately talking about the next one, talking about how this is a young team. 
right? And it's that Tom Brady mentality where it's like, which championship's the best, the next, right? And so they're kind of immediately, like he just won the Super Bowl, just through a, like a game ceiling touchdown pass. Like he, the win's like five minutes old and he's thinking about the next one. So this is a daunting, a daunting challenge for the Vikings. And if they really do have Super Bowl aspirations, and you can debate whether or not they actually have a chance. But Kevin O'Connell, Kwesi Dopamensa, people in the Vikings building actually are aiming to become Super Bowl contenders. You're going to have to take down the king, more than likely. And you best not miss, because if you miss and you give him a chance, he'll probably win. So San Francisco is the short answer. Yeah. But it's it's there are questions there, right? Yeah. And I think if you look at what San Francisco has, like they've been building for quite some time. That's right. Uh, to get That's there, right. Several think, years. That's right. Like so, like by mentioning, it's not it's not about how the Vikings win uh, the Super Bowl next year, but what right you are you are building something. And like you said, Quasi yep. Dofimenza has been building slowly towards this. Had had a couple yep. of years, uh, yep. but it is okay. What are those pieces you're starting to put in? And like you said if it yep. is a, a first or a second round pick on an edge rusher, um, yep. like those that could be one piece of having that formidable front seven yep um, exactly just to touch yeah. on the piece that you talked about a little bit with um quarterback so i know dustin mm-hmm. baker tweeted out just mentioning that nine of the last 10 super bowls a qb not on a rookie deal has guided his team to the super bowl win mm-hmm. so like you said not not impossible but certainly has not been uh this recipe for super bowl wins that uh sometimes it seems like it's made out to be which which two QBs would dominate that? Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes. They 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 would represent a a, a major portion of that. Yeah. Uh, Matthew Stafford. You think of him getting his. You know, like there are. It's it's not just those two, but um, that is a stat that's pretty weighed down by two historically great Hall of Fame QBs. Which yeah. is fine. Like that's, that's yeah. like that doesn't necessarily nullify his point, but it's worth noting we're talking about two guys are a major part of that. Yeah, I'm trying to do the math in my head. I think it's at least six, if not seven, of of Tom Brady and Mahomes. Mahomes look. is three. I, I think. I'm I think sure. Brady what, was I think Mahomes his rookie deal when he won his first Super Bowl. I have to look it up. Oh, that's a good question. It was close. Yeah, close. Well, we can. Uh, someone can look into that. We can look yeah, into yeah. it. Um, there you go. Maybe I can do it. But um, good. Well, maybe just to to shift a little bit to Vikings news. I think again, there's lots of conversation the quarterback position continues to uh be a, a topic of discussion but uh, one of the mm-hmm. quotes that really caught my eye this week was uh, justin jefferson went on a uh, podcast uh the mad dog sports radio uh talking with adam uh, again uh shine uh, or sheen i'm not sure exactly how to pronounce the uh the last name but he talked about um again, the the phrase that really caught people's eye was this idea of breaking the bank um mm-hmm. in terms of his next contract i know one of the other quotes uh one of the other pieces was talking about even just as you think about the vikings um he's talked about kind of it feels like he's put the ball in the vikings court about uh the vikings will do what they need to do to have me in the building um mm-hmm. 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 time will tell lots of things that again if you are uh, a skeptic or a pessimist, you might look at that and, and be a little bit concerned mm-hmm. uh, coming out of that interview. What What are your thoughts as as you uh, read what he was saying, or, or maybe listen? But um, what are your thoughts in terms of kind of even just this transition? Because I know even as recent as last summer, there was some conversations where it felt like Jefferson mm-hmm. was like, "Well, it's not all about the money." Uh, yep. And yep. then this idea of breaking the bank feels a little bit like the tune has changed. Yeah, uh, maybe to a certain extent. And, and I mean, people are allowed to change their minds and people can go close to a year, like say Justin Jefferson, and maybe his thinking has evolved a little bit, right? That's fine too. Uh, but in reality, I don't think this is too far different from what he said. You know, elsewhere in that same interview on Mad Dog Radio, radio show, um, you know, he talked about how he was so thankful for the Vikings. Right. And he wouldn't be where he is if they didn't actually take a chance on him, made him the fifth receiver chosen and how he actually wants to stay in Minnesota. In the end, he thinks Minnesota is going to do what they have to to keep him in Minnesota. 
And then if you even go back, you could go back to where he says, you know, I'm not too fond of money last year, last off season. It would have been very naive to take that comment and say, oh, Jefferson's going to come back for like 20 million a year or 25 million a year, something like that. Um, you know, he talks about how he wants to be somewhere where he's valued and paid a fair amount. Like it's, it's the NFL. It's always about the money. How do you show someone you value him? You give him major money. Like that, that's how you do it in the NFL, right? Almost always. And so I don't actually think this is that far removed from stuff, even though like the wording is different. Obviously he's saying, I'm not too fond of money. I want to break the bank. Those two statements appear to be basically fundamentally at odds with one another and basically contradictory. I don't actually think though, in reality, his thinking is that far removed. Maybe it's evolved a little bit. I mean, he's just coming off. Think about all he went through and he still put up more than a thousand yards. Right. And so maybe there's this sense of I'm 24 years old. I'm putting up these historic numbers. I put up a thousand yards, even in a season where I missed seven full games, part of two other games and worked through the QB carousel. And I still had this kind of production, uh, kind of realizing, you know, he knows how special he is, right? Everyone knows how special he is. And the Vikings really must keep him, have to keep him, can't trade him, forget the trade stuff, it's not happening, have to keep him. Right. And so this one actually doesn't raise too many concerns. To me, it's just a matter of when does the deal get done and kind of how many kind of rumor generating headlines um, kind of happen between now and then. Right. And so if you look last year, TJ Hawkinson got his major extension uh, late in August. Josh Metellus signed his extension early September. Neil Hunter staged his hold in. He got his contract adjusted at the beginning of training camp. I think that would have been late July. I'd have to look that up. Right. So the, the precedent a little bit for handling like that in-house business is like in the summer, July, August, September, kind of transitioning into the fall. Right. I wonder though, if it's a little bit different for Jeff Jefferson, because he's at such a level. You think of when Quasi Do Fomenza first got hired uh, in March of 2022. So he'd been on the job for like two months, maybe less. He extended Cousins. Right. So generally speaking, March and April, that, that's that's for him to sign free agents and obviously make draft picks. Uh, and it's more common to see, you know, cutting players, trimming salary, you know, pay cuts. This this is kind of what Quasi Dofa Mensa generally does at that time. And then kind of the in-house business of like extending your guys, that has been a little bit more sectioned off to a certain extent for like training camp, preseason, regular season. Uh, I wonder if Justin Jefferson's a bit different because he's obviously different. It's Justin Jefferson, right? And he's 24. He's elite. He is at worst the top 10 player in the NFL. At worst, maybe a top five, right? And so this this is your cornerstone guy, right? And and then so I'm really not that worried about it. I really don't think it's as contradictory as it seems. It's if you were just you know just take out the two little snippets, you could make it seem very contradictory. Um, Overall, I'm not really that worried about it. And I don't think Vikings fans should be that worried about it either, but we'll see what happens in the end. I really don't have any say on this decision. It comes down to obviously Quasi Dolphin Mensa, Jefferson and his agent, and kind of where they're going to end up. Um, I do think the extension still gets done, though. And I would think my, my best guess, even with the Hawkinson precedent and Metellus and all that, I, I would think it happens in March. That's my best guess, simply because the extension has the the potential to free up close to 15 million. That doesn't mean that extension does free up 15 million, but if they wanted to push the 2024 savings to the max, they could free up close to 15 million. And that is 15 million in 2024 that could be used to, say, build a deep, formidable group of pass rushers or, or, or whatever it is. Like, you know, you could go towards anything, right? But that is one way that you could finance a totally reloaded defensive front is by extending Jefferson. That means it's a short-term game, but a long-term pain, but the option's there, right? And so we'll just kind of see. But overall, in my concern level, like one to 10, it's like a two, three, okay. not not pretty, very high. Pretty level-headed take. Again, not falling into, uh, I, you talk about just taking those two snippets. Sometimes we get in yeah. trouble when we uh, yeah. don't see the full picture. Um, so I... I think that makes sense. Again, I think um, it's one of 
in some ways, it's probably the biggest decision that the Vikings are going to make. Again, quarterback is important, but uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that the, there's less maybe mystery around what's going to happen, but uh, it is big mm-hmm. because he is the best player uh, on this team yeah. and no deserves to get paid. And 24 uh, years old. It's very young. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's very young. Yep. Well, I uh, I just did a quick little bit of research again. You're talking about the we were talking about those quarterbacks, uh, mm-hmm. last ten quarterbacks. So Mahomes was is the guy, uh, if my research is correct, that was on the rookie deal. Um, so it was him. He him and Brady have combined for winning seven of the last ten Super Bowls. Um, it's a big and, deal. And uh, yeah, so we've got uh, Brady, you got Stafford, Manning, and Nick Foles as the other. Uh, right other quarterbacks of one i that's 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 an obvious one but that's not the one i was just thinking of the homes and then i was thinking of the rams obviously because kevin o'connell and so when i was initially digesting that that tidbit that's where my mind went but nick Foles, of course because yeah. if if we had more time likes. i would have made you guess them all but um yeah yeah right 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 yeah that would have been you could have been here a long time man a long time yeah <laughs> um but we'll We'll wrap up there with the caveat that uh, I know Kyle, you got a little bit of a, a pitch for something that you've been working on mm-hmm. for for a little bit here. Um, mm-hmm. Floor's yours. Take it away. Yes, this one's been brewing over at Vikings territory and PTSD for a long time. We're calling it Minnesota Madness. We're obviously playing off of March Madness and college hoops, college basketball, and basically we're, we've set it. We're going to be setting up a tournament, right, of the Vikings' best plays of the twenty twenty three season and we're going to be getting our readers to vote kind of work their way through this bracket and vote and pick a winner for best play of the year okay and so we're starting we've only got games 1 to 16 to make the numbers work game 17 unfortunately got axed and so if we could have found a way to get game 17 in there it would have been the johnny munt catch in the scene third and 30 32 yards just phenomenal play Maybe maybe would have won the tournament. I don't know. It was a fantastic play from Johnny Munt. Really nice throw from Nick Mullins. That play ended up getting axed, unfortunately. So we have 16 games and a representative play from each game. Tried to get a broad range of players. There's only one sort of repeat player. Uh, and so, because you could easily do like 16 amazing plays with like just Dobbs, Jefferson, Addison. Like you could have easily just gotten bogged down by like three or four guys and had a totally legitimate best plays bracket but we tried to spread the love so we've got several you know, a lot of players more than 16 players i represented because there's a couple instances where two guys you just couldn't distinguish you know what made this play so special so we, you know some some plays have two guys with their names on the ticket and it's basically going to be you know game one versus game 16 game two versus game 15 game three versus game 14 you know bracket style go through watch the clips make your vote and we're going to tally up the votes across the two sites. We're going to add them all together from VT and PTSD. And we'll go from there, right? So we start at 16. You know, we have, you know, one versus 16 and so on and so forth. Who gets more votes? They they survive and go on to the next round. And so we go from 16 to 18, 18 to 4, 4 to 2, and 2 to 1. And when we have the winner, this is going to be announced on Friday, March 15th. We're then going to make a donation as a company to the Vikings Foundation, uh, in the hopes of sending it along to uh, the youth kind of football branch of that. They do different things in the Vikings Foundation, but the kind of thinking is that we would try to reinvest in the game a little bit. And uh, so we're going to be sending along $1,600, $1,600, as a way of mirroring the amount of plays that we began with. So $1,600, 16 plays where we started. And uh, so that's going to be starting. So the announcement came out today, live on both sites. Friday, March 16th is when that first round gets going. Full 16 plays. So hop over to Vikings Territory for PTSD.com. I believe they're going live at 8 a.m. on each site. That's the plan at least, right? So we'll see if anything needs to get adjusted. But the plan is Friday, March 16th, 8 a.m. VT and or P- Purple PTSD. Go through, watch the clips, relive some great moments, cast your vote, try to determine which play is the best. And in the end, we'll be making our donation in honor of that player who's responsible for the play. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Um, I was thinking about the decision to axe a game and I was thinking that uh, maybe that Raiders game could have been axed. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, 
but you'll 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 have to tune in Sam and see which play we chose. In that, the Raiders game. That's true because again, I was thinking that that game just kind of got washed from my brain. Um, but maybe there is a play that I'm forgetting that uh, that happened there that was special. So, uh, yeah, see. be sure to check out uh, that and and go vote. So good. Well, we'll wrap up there. Uh, maybe I can make a little bit of a programming note now. I think we're just we're mm-hmm. coming to. Uh, I think a little bit of a spot where we know that things are going to be quiet. So it's going to be pretty mm-hmm. quiet from us from the rest of February. We're planning to have uh, one more episode with a guest uh, that should come out within the next week. But other than that, uh, we're, uh, we'll are we be back in March. So again, be sure to check mm-hmm. out that uh, episode as long as everything continues to go well. That's when we'll uh, do that. But then we'll take a little break till, till March. So um just so that people are aware, uh, come back. We'll make sure to be posting on uh, different sites when when podcasts are live. But appreciate everyone listening. Uh, hope everyone has a good week. And uh, we'll be back uh, with our guest episode next. Uh, take care, everyone. Have a good week. Bye. Mm-hmm.